children by profession <coughs> and now runs a small holding near glass houses in Nidderdale. Uh, he was involved in the Labour Party politics for many years and joined the Lib Dems in 2017. So, some of the students at the front of the Hermistead have picked the order in which the candidates will speak. So the candidates now have five minutes, starting with Brian, to address you. OK, well, thank you, everyone. Can you all hear me? Yeah. yeah. Come on, a bit more enthusiasm there. Um, OK, so this is my first campaign, um, and the question is, lots of people have asked me, why are you standing? And why are you standing in an area that is seen as a conservative stronghold? There's no point, you know, standing, you're not going to win. For me, that's not a good reason. I think no politician, no candidate, no party should feel comfortable in a seat. And second reason I'm standing here is we need change. I'm fed up of seeing the vulnerable in our society, the young, the old, the disabled, continuously having their support cut away from them and all their opportunities diminish. As, as, as was said, I've lived in this constituency for over 13 years. I've watched my family grow up here, and I'm not going to embarrass my stepdaughter sitting in the back there. Um, I won't say who you are. And as I said, I've watched my family grow up here. But I've also seen what austerity, and you've all heard the word austerity, has done in the last decade across this, this community and across society in the UK. My son um, has had many health challenges over the years. When he was born, he was born premature, so he spent a lot of time in intensive care. At the age of three, he was diagnosed with autism, and at the age of six, he was diagnosed with stage three cancer. After chemotherapy and radiotherapy, he came through it and he was cured. But during that time, it really opened my eyes on how crucial and vital our national health service is and how wonderful and dedicated the people that work in there, all the nurses, the surgeons, the doctors, all the charity workers that helped out, the cleaners, catering staff, it really, really helped me, my families, and many other families in a similar situation. So for me to see a National Health Service at risk of being privatised and being put on the table for any trade deal and, and a negotiation for Brexit is shocking. I do not want to see that happen. I don't think our NHS should be for sale, and I won't let it happen if it does. So that's, many, that's one reason. But also, we've got a society where we have food banks, and we've got a food bank in Skipton, we've got one in Settle, we've got one in Ripon. So across the constituency, we have food banks. We're a society that's the fifth richest economy in the world. We should not have food banks. When food banks were introduced in 2010, 40,000 people relied on food banks. Last year, that figure was sitting at 1.6 million. 1.6 million people relying on handouts in this society. No one, no one, no family should be relying on handouts. There's this thing, I, I visited the food banks recently, and they have this thing called a cold box that they give out to people. Have any of you heard what a cold box is? I don't think many people have. What a cold box is, they give it out to families who can't afford heating. So, and they're quite popular, these cold boxes. So it's cold food because they haven't got the facilities to heat up their own food. Again, that's a shocking statistic. We should not have that in our society. Child poverty, and you've heard that in the news recently, we have child poverty that is at growing, an alarming growing rate across the UK. In Skipton and Ripon, you think this is a very affluent area. You know, we, sh we shouldn't have child poverty here. We've got 18% of children living in poverty, 18%. It's, it's, for me, it's just shocking that we have a society where child poverty is growing and no one seems to be talking about it. You look at the Conservatives and you look at Boris Johnson, all they're focused on is getting Brexit done, get Brexit done. To me, OK, it's a very important issue, but there's so many other things happening in our society that we really need to address as well. Homelessness. Again, something we don't really see in the streets of Skipton and Ripon, but across the UK, that's becoming an epidemic. For yourself, um, young people, when you, when you leave home eventually... Hopefully you will soon, soon. Notice I'm joking, Julia. Um, is 20% of 18 to 25-year-olds are sofa surfing. So sofa surfing means that you're going around houses because you've got no accommodation of your own because you can't afford housing. A lot of you will be planning to go to university. So it's a great opportunity, but many people won't be able to because you might not be able to afford it. Because at the moment, if you went through university had to get a student loan, there's no maintenance grants, an old thing that we used to get when we went to university, you'd end up coming out with an average of £57,000 of debt. How can you start your life? How can you afford a house? How can you feel comfortable when already that first step out there into the world, you have that, that amount of debt? So for a Labour Party, we'll, we'll scrap tuition fees and we'll introduce the maintenance grant. So maintenance grant is something I had. It just helps you live day to day and it makes you feel comfortable so you can focus on the important thing and that is, that is educating yourself. 
So there are so many issues out there that, for me, need to be talked about for, you to, for people to open their eyes at as well. Other thing is we've got such a huge division in society caused by Brexit and the effect of Trump over in the USA. My wife is from Poland, and she moved over here about 15 years ago. And there's a big Polish community sitting in Skipton, but a lot of them have left over the last year because they don't feel welcome because of the nature of Brexit and all this talk about immigration. <coughs> For me, again, that is a shocking way to have our society where people don't feel welcome. Look at our history as a country, as, as a nation. We've always embraced people coming here and working here and providing um, to, to society. So again, for me, to feel people, people feel left out, feel they're not wanted in this, in this place is, is shocking. So I could go on and on about different things, but another real issue for me is I'm a um, parent governor for two schools in Skipton, Brooklyn's special needs school, where my son goes to, and also the Craven Pupil Referral Service. Now, I'm not sure how many of you are aware of that second one. It's a place on Keithley Road that looks after students who are struggling in mainstream school, either in, you know, in, in grammar school, in academy, wherever, who are either having behavioural issues or mental health issues. The latter, mental health, is an issue that is growing at an alarming rate, not just in young people, but in adults as well. But what's happening is they're threatening to close down that, that referral centre, and also there's no contingency plan on what to do with those 60 students that sit there. They've got a year before they're actually either put back into mainstream schools, put back into the community, and for them there's no support. Again, this is another measure of austerity where this Conservative government has cut away at all the support we have for mental health, for addiction. Okay. So, if I can stop sorry, in am minute. I going on? Yeah, you, you, just going up to you over your five Right, minutes. just last, last point. On the 12th of December, for those that can vote, you have a real choice. You've got the choice <laughs> of sticking for what we have, or worse, another five years of Boris Johnson as Prime Minister scares me, or you can vote for change. Vote for Labour and you will vote for change. Thank you. Thank you.